Yeah, obviously, you know, there's disappointment whenever you don't get selected for a game, but um, I got some good, honest feedback from the coaches and, and definitely what I needed. Um, and worked really hard to get to get myself to a point uh, where I could really push myself for selection. It's nice to get rewarded. Um, but yeah, gotta gotta keep on pushing hard and, and work really hard on Saturday to, to retain to retain that spot because, you know, Tommy Hoop is a great young talent and we're pushing each other each day and you got Robbie Leota coming through and all the guys on the Aussie A side and um, that competitiveness is nice but we're all fighting for that one spot so we're all uh, we're all pushing each other. The corresponding feature last year, you made your debut against Argentina. Um, <laughs> how much do you feel like you've grown throughout that period? Do you think you're better placed now, um, off that back of years experience, to, to really give the shape? Really? Yeah, it's um, it's been a wild year. Um, yeah, it feels a uh, feels like yesterday that debut over in that Mendoza. Um, and I was I was just talking to Josh Kemeny today about my experience that day and how I couldn't sit still. I was we had our own rooms and I was constantly interchanging between boys' rooms because I just didn't want to sit by myself. And um, to now being able to give that advice to a guy like him, um, line out calling and stuff like that. So the growth has been uh, has been great. It's it's definitely something that. You know, you really strive for as a player is to get better. Don't, don't get me wrong; there was definitely down points throughout the season and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's it's taken a lot to make sure that I get back on track and and uh, really happy to be here and kind of circle back. And I'll have uh, 11 people in the crowd. Um, you know, my family, my two daughters, my wife, and her family from America who just flew in yesterday as well. So. They're all coming to watch me play, so it's going to be awesome. Awesome. And um, the Eddie Jones six that he wants, how does that differ to today? And, and what are the couple of things that Eddie's searching for? Uh, mate, to be honest, he's just physical. Um, he wants a big, strong uh, pack who's willing to run over people and, and, and front up in defence. And, and he's been, you know, brutally brutally honest about that with, with every guy who's in our forward pack really um, obviously smart around the set piece uh, that I need to be in, in terms of what I bring individually but you know what he wants from his forwards is is be physical Neil obviously you no know, coaching staff wants to start a year like that against you know resulting in South Africa last week what have you been what have you seen about, about the response from the players to really try and rectify that and sort of get the season off to the right track um, yeah, the response has been outstanding. You know, like you said, it was disappointing, really disappointing, particularly from a Ford's point of view. Um, Jed alluded to a bit earlier, you know, it's an honest group, so we had a look at it. Um, we're not going to hide from the things that didn't go well. Um, so we worked on those, you know, we talked about our, our scrum and our, our set-piece defence, what we do from set-piece, particularly for a Ford pack, and then physicality at the game line. You know, those are the three things that stood out. Um, they're always a work on, you know, we want this Ford pack to be the best Ford pack in the world. So those are, you know, those are things that there's been pretty close attention to this week. Just on that physicality, it really seems to be the area that South Africa just got dominance for the full 80 minutes. What's been addressed? I guess what's the lesson out of that game that you can take from into Argentina and into the World Cup this year? Uh, it starts at set piece. So it's just like a domino effect. You know, if you don't, if you don't minimum achieve parity, you're always going to be on the back foot. It's pretty hard against big men, you know, to recover that. So. It starts phase one. We've got to do better phase one, and then, you know, Jed's already spoken about it. The, you know what the, what the players have been talking about is, is being a lot more physical on the game line because you're not always going to get what you want. There's going to be times where you know other sides do get on top where they have a purple patch, and our response has got to be better. It's losing your toe captain Michael Hooper, um, I guess Fraser comes in as almost a like for like. What are you sort of saying about him? What can he add to this for Um Yeah, he's, he's a bloke that's willing to work. You know, obviously you can't replace Hooper's experience. Um, you know, he, he's such a, a big personality around the squad and what he brings from a captaincy point of view. Uh, but there's an opportunity for other blokes to sort of, you know, for Samu Karevi, for other people, for Will Skelton, for people like Jed to come in in their areas and, and make sure that it's, we're not relying on one or two, pe or one or two people. Um, Fraser's been pretty similar. You know, he understands clearly what his role is um, and needs to, he needs to do his job on Saturday. He's trained really well this week. He's been doing that all, all week in training. Um, and we'll be looking forward to seeing a transfer on Saturday. Thank you.
I guess on those injured players coming back in, your Angus Bells, your Robbie Yoders, Matt Phillips, what do they add? Just you know the energy of getting those guys back into into the group. Yeah, that you know they've obviously been with us probably for the last four weeks. So they've been in with us, um, they've had really good energy, you know, to get someone like Bally back will be great. Um, you know, he had a, that stuttering start to the season in that first game. Uh, he's been with us literally since, since we arrived or since I arrived. Um, so he's had some extra sort of special care and attention. Um, and he's again responded brilliantly. Now he's going to be important for us off the bench, not only from a set piece point of view, uh, point of view but for carrying the ball as well. Jed, how gutted are you for Michael Hooper to miss the test? home for him in Sydney, just given we don't know what the future holds for him. Yeah, um, you know, I know it is one that he, he would have really loved to have, um, but he understands it's part of the game, injuries. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're talking about it, the bad thing is about it is he's going to miss this game, but the good thing, you know, it's, it's going to be a short turnaround before he gets back on the field, so it won't be his last test match, uh, let's hope, touch wood. Um, but yeah, I, I'd, I'd know he would really love to be out here um, in front of his friends and family, to be playing in front of his home state, um, yeah, with all of us. So, but he's, you know, he's got those non-23 boys or non-25 boys working really hard, got them doing uh, social events. So whenever he's not leading with us, he's leading somewhere else. So he's he's always doing something hoops and something to contribute to the team. So yeah, gutted for him, but you know, it's part of the game. For you, you said you've got what, 11 friends and family here. What will that mean for you to have them in the crowd tomorrow? Yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Like obviously in Argentina, that no one got to see me play my debut. Um, and mum and dad and, and my wife have, and my sisters here have only really been to see me play. So um, just to have my my wife's family, especially, come all the way from America. Um, they might be a bit jet lagged, but <laughs> so are we still come from South Africa. Um, but yeah, it, it means a lot, and especially to play in front of my girls. My my two year olds really starting to understand it now, calling it footy ball, chasing me around, and wanting me to kick it with us. So um, yeah, it's going to be you know really emotional to play in front of all of them. Uh, Neil, you mentioned uh, you want the Wallabies to have the best ball back. In the world, but it's pretty big test this weekend. Obviously, Argentina, Papua Matera, uh, Thomas Adamini, like this is a team who you know has plenty of physicality about them. How highly do you rank them? I guess in terms of forward pack around the world. Um, yeah, pretty highly. You know, they like as last week they struggled a bit. So knowing a little bit about Michael Checker, I'm sure there'll be some bounce back there as well. Um, so yeah, look, we expect them to come out and be very physical. They, they, I think they've done exceptionally well over the last two or three years on the back of how physical their forward pack's been, uh, and even in the backs, you know, that you know what you're getting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a great challenge to see it basically how both sides respond. But you've got a pretty big boost this week, both literally and figuratively, Will Skelton and Richiano in the second row. How helpful is it, you know, to have two of the it's always helpful to have somebody like that side, you know, Will Skelton at whatever he is, 7 foot and 145 kgs. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, it's helpful. But, uh, you, you know, the, we're not going to we're not gonna do well as a forward pack with two blokes. You know, the, I think where Will Skelton's been absolutely brilliant is the energy, you know, Jed can talk about it, the energy, the enthusiasm that he's brought back. He's obviously had two or three brilliant seasons where he's probably been one of the standout forwards in Europe. You know, it was teams won sort of week after week, won two European Cups. So Richie's had similar experiences with Toulouse. So not only from a physicality point of view, but from a, a mindset mentality that come from two winning environments. So they've been brilliant back into, you know, into, uh, into our group. And Jed, you're coming up against Pablo Latira. You know, he has to be one of the best blindside flankers in the world. For you, back in Wallaby Gold after about eight months, but coming up against him, how much of a challenge is that? It's exciting, mate. It's really exciting, um, and I actually played against Pablo in the Australian under 20s. It was funny. I was watching them play at the same field. Uh, I think it was against Ireland when it was <laughs> the weather was exactly the same, and Pablo put on a clinic that day. Um, but he's a competitor. He, he fires into everything. He, he's super skillful, and um, you know I got to match him in, in, in the areas that I'm good at. Uh, set piece wise, ball carry and physicality. Um, we're, we're different players, but I'm, uh, as you said, he's world class. I'm, I'm excited to, to put myself to that standard. 
And uh, last one for me. Um, you mentioned, you know, you had a challenge with that number six jersey alongside some other players, including Tom Hooper. Um, what have you said to him, I guess, throughout the last week? He came off after about half an hour on his debut. Have you shared any wisdom or had any words to him about we can do better? Or a little bit, but just, I guess, put an arm around him. Oh, mood lighting. <laughs> um, yeah, get an arm around him. Um, obviously, it was his debut, disappointing loss, coming off 30 minutes injured. He was, he was quite devastated. Um, but, yeah, I, I made sure that, you know, he was in decent enough headspace because he's, he's, honestly, he's a, he's a fiery competitor. He's going to be a great player. His attitude towards everything is just work, 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 continually wants to get better. So he was quite hard on himself. Um, so, yeah, I was putting an arm around him. And in terms of me stepping up into the sixth jersey this week, he has constantly been asking me each day, what do you need, what do you need, what do you need? So I think that's a testament to the environment that we're building in here. We're all competing each day. But, um, yeah, we want to make each other better. Whoever's selected in that jersey, we want what's best for the team. Um, so, yeah. Argentina. Uh, sorry, what do you expect from Argentina? Uh, we expect them to be physical. Uh, as Hat said, that any any Michael Checker side who doesn't bring that physicality, you know, they're, they're going to cop a spraying or something in the sheds if, if they don't have that edge about them. So they're going to come. Uh, they're going to come with some tricks up their sleeves. Um, but it's all going to be based around physicality and coming after us. You know, watching. If you're reviewing our game versus South Africa, that's if I was coaching a team, that's what I'd be saying. Try to dominate their set piece, dominate their scrum, get them on the back foot, and then opportunities are going to open up. So um, I dare say they're going to try to do the same thing, and, and we need to come ready to go and, uh, and match them there. And you watch, sorry, raise above them. You watch an evolution in the Pumas rugby since Michael Cheka is in the, in the, in the boss? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Every team check has been with, you know, you see almost an immediate turnaround. Um, he's unbelievable at bringing a team together. Um, he's unbelievable at implementing style and he's really good at, you know, creating edge amongst the group. So um, I've been coached by check. I've been yelled at multiple times by check and uh, I know how, how, how much of a quality coach he is. So, yeah, they're going to come ready to go tomorrow and... and so do we. It's weird having him in front. In front of you mean the other team. Uh, the other team. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I suppose so. It, it is, but you know, it's a professional era these days. People bounce around everywhere. Um, it was weirder seeing him coach rugby league, but he went pretty good there too. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Jed, um, they go pretty hard at the ball. The Argentinians. Uh, that's a lot of their successes come from disrupting ball there. Some of our plans. <laughs> um, mate, it's just our attacking breakdown, you know, as every team's revolved around. If you don't have a good attacking breakdown, you can't play footy. Um, so we need to be on in that area, make sure we're arriving fast. And it all starts with uh, what Hats and I've been alluding to this whole conference is our physicality with our ball carry. If we're not physical and we're not getting over the game line, they're going to going to be going hard at that ball, and uh, we're going to be slow to the breakdown. So we need to make sure we're good there. Yeah. For and Neil, can you turn around and scrum in a week? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's it's going to be a process. Um, you know, with with people coming into the team and more people to be added, um, and where we started and where we're trying to get to. But yeah, we can turn around in a week. Um, but like I said, it's, it's going to be evolution there, not revolution. So. And you know, I'm just grateful with the playing group that we got because, like I said, they're really honest in the review and acknowledge that it's the, probably the biggest area we need to get right. Yeah. Yeah. Perception, yeah. Of, Last couple of things, perception of big thing as well, like in a World Cup year to show the world, the refs, that the scrum is strong, or does it not matter? Um, no, I think it always matters. It always matters. Everyone will tell you that you know people ref the game from the first whistle. I think perception's massively important. So. You know, we know with games leading up into it, you know, hopefully the quarter-finals, semi-finals, etc. 
the work that we've done in the, in the pool games and in these games that we've got now at Friendies against France, you know, our job is to create that perception.